Hi everybody, welcome to this video. Today we're going to have a look at the articulators and the vocal tract. So what are the articulators that help us speak? Now you might have heard about these terms vocal tract, active articulators and passive articulators and we're going to have a look at all of those in this video. So first of all, the vocal tract. This is really the space in our bodies where the sounds are produced and formed. And part of the vocal tract is the oral cavity. And that really, we usually just call our mouth. And you can see in the cross section on the screen that I put a little orange bar where the oral cavity, the mouth, really is. So we have the oral cavity and then we also have the nasal cavity and that's actually quite big as you can see on the diagram and this forms also part of the vocal tract. Next we have the upper throat and again have a look where that is on the diagram and the upper throat is also called the pharynx. So you probably see this word being used in your literature. And then we have the larynx, which is really um, the part where the vocal cords are and the glottal, uh, the glottis, sorry, <laughs> where we form the glottal stop. So the larynx is a little bit further down in our throat and it's the part with the vocal cords and you can see those those are the little cords in black on the cross section. Let's have a look at the function of the vocal tract. Now, the vocal tract helps create our voice. It also makes the sound louder. And usually we use the word amplify here. So it amplifies the sound. And it also helps us form the sounds into speech. And instead of form, we often use the word modify here. So quite a lot of things happening in the vocal tract. And the articulators play a crucial role because they help form the sound within the vocal tract. Now, they also help make the sound resonate. It's another important word for you. Let's have a look at the articulators next. Um, so those are in general just parts or places in our body that help us form sounds. And uh, most of them are located here in the vocal tract really. Um, so we're going to go over those step by step. First of all, very, very important, without this articulator nothing would happen. That is our tongue. And again, have a look at the error. I will always point to the different articulators in the cross section. So we have the tongue. And of course, we can also divide the tongue into um, smaller sections. So there's the front or the tip, the body or the blade of the tongue, and then also the root of the tongue. And you sometimes see different words being used but it's quite common when we talk about the tongue to differentiate further and have different sections just because it's actually quite a big and large articulator and then we have our lips the upper and lower lip and they are both involved as articulators to form sounds we also have the teeth but especially our upper teeth they help us form sounds as well. Next we have the alveolar ridge. Now this you might think okay I can see the arrow pointing but where exactly is this? It's this little sort of bump in your gum just behind your teeth. So if you just use your finger it's here just behind your teeth and um, it's involved when you say for example sounds like t the tip of your tongue touches um, this little ridge. Then a little bit further back on the roof of your mouth, you have the heart palate. 
And if we go a little bit further back even, the soft palette, sometimes also called the velum. And then we have the uvula, and that is the little bit that is free hanging um, that you can also see when you open your mouth wide and you say ah, and you go really close to a mirror, you can see the uvula hanging freely in your mouth. And then we go further down. Now this part you can definitely not see anymore, even if you have a mirror. And this is the pharynx. So this is really um, going further down to uh, when we breathe and then <clears throat> obviously also when we, when we eat or drink. Um, so our food or our drink passes this part as well, the pharynx. We would just usually say your throat. And then you have a little flap sticking out here. And this is the epiglottis. And this little flap has a very, very important function because it moves down to close the windpipe. And the windpipe is um, the tube where the vocal cords are. And this is obviously the tube where that goes to our lungs eventually, where we, um, where we get, uh, where we breathe. And so this little flap is important because it has to close whenever we swallow food or drink, because we don't want that to end up in the wrong pipe. Um, and so this is also the one that can sometimes swell up in an allergic reaction. And it's really, really dangerous because you can see if that flap were to be closed the entire time, we could not breathe. Um, and so this is open though, uh, when we speak, um, because obviously we need the wind to go through. And then we have the glottis and the glottis is um, not so much a body part rather than a place uh, because it is the space between the vocal cords. Um, so you can see they are open, those two cords, two little strings more or less, and they are elastic and they open and close and vibrate when we speak. And so that space in between them is called the glottis. Now, there are a couple of things to remember when we speak about articulators, and that is that many of those can be divided further. I explained this before with the tongue. Very often in literature, you will see that the tongue is then divided into the tip or the front, the blade or the middle bit and the root, the back of the tongue. And that is quite normal. And also there is no strict separation between some of these areas. So it's not like, okay, here's where the tip ends and the blade starts, or this is where the soft palate ends and the hard palate starts. So those um, transitions are a little bit fluid. So what about the larynx, you might wonder, because you probably heard this word before if you are studying phonology or if you're interested in pronunciation, you might have heard this word. Now, the larynx is also called the voice box. So this is just a synonym for the voice box where our voice is really created as a vital part, really. And it's this entire area all the way from our epiglottis um, further down into the, the windpipe, really. Um, so this entire part, the epiglottis and then the glottis with the vocal cords, all of that together is called the voice box or the larynx. And some people also say that the larynx is an articulator, but really within the larynx, you have a couple of articulators. And there's another word that you might have heard as well, the trachea. Again, funny spelling, all of those words. <laughs> So what is the trachea? I haven't mentioned this yet because it's not really an articulator. Um, this is really the windpipe. It's the tube going from your vocal cords all the way down to your lungs where the air is really coming from, where it's going to and fro. And so the trachea is your windpipe. So like I said, the trachea is not usually classified as an articulator. It is an important part because without it, we don't really have, we need this, this tube to carry the air. Otherwise, without air, no articulation at all. But it's not really an articulator and it doesn't help us form or shape 
um, the sounds that we use to speak. Um, we mentioned earlier active and passive articulators. And so all of those articulators that I've just mentioned can be separated into active and passive articulators. And so what is the difference? Let's start with the active articulators. Um, those are all the articulators that are movable. So they can move around and take on different forms and shapes. So obviously the main one is the tongue. It's really flexible. You can make different shapes with the tongue, move it to different parts in the mouth. And that was, will greatly impact the sound that is produced. So that the front, the body, the root, all of those are movable. The tongue is an active articulator. So are the lips. They are also part of the active articulators and also the epiglottis because obviously can be open or closed. And so it forms part of that as well. And of course, the glottis, that little space between the vocal cords, because the vocal cords are actively opening and closing, they're vibrating, and so the glottis is also an active articulator. So that leaves all the rest to be passive articulators, and they are stationary. So that just means they don't move around. Um, they're just in your mouth, in that place, that's it. And so all of those are again a vital part of our articulation process and you have to remember the reason why we um, separate them into two groups is because the active articulators always move towards the passive articulators to either form a complete closure like we have in plosives and stops or to come very close to cause air friction in fricatives or to do something else <laughs> But the active articulators, they move and they move towards the one of the passive articulators to form and shape the sound. So remember, it's all the ones that we didn't mention in the active list. So our teeth, the alveolar ridge, the hard palate, the soft palate, and of course the uvula and the pharynx as well. So here's a summary of a cross section of a head um, with all the different articulators and parts labeled. So just take a look to, to take this in. So see if you can find the face is, is basically it's facing this way. As you can see the nose and at the front we have the lips. And then we also have the bones where our teeth then are, you know, located into so we have the teeth and then it says jaw that's the jawbone at the bottom but also at the top right so we have the teeth behind that we have the tongue you can see what a big articulator the tongue is it's probably one of the largest i think of all of them and um the tongue is a muscle remember it's a muscle that's why i also always say when you practice pronunciation um and you form a sound or a sequence of sound that you find, oh, it's really difficult for me in this new language to form these sounds. It's because your tongue most likely is always involved. Usually is not used to the movement or to forming the shape. Maybe the shape is entirely new for you and your tongue. And so just like with all your other body muscles, you need to practice make it stronger, make it get used to these different shapes and moves, just like you would if you were to go to the gym and train any of your other muscles in your body. So we've got the tongue. You can see the oral cavity that is the mouth and the nasal cavity above. And in between we have the heart palate, the soft palate, the uvula, and then it goes down into the pharynx, the throat. You can see the epiglottis again. And then Really, this is where, you know, the little flap that can go down and then close off the, the larynx and, and the, the area that goes then down into the trachea, the windpipe. And just before, we have the glottis with the two vocal cords. Um, did I miss anything out? I think I've mentioned all of those again. And so hopefully this has been helpful for you 
to get a bit of an overview of what we mean by vocal tract and what different parts are our articulators and why we separate into active and passive articulators. And make sure to subscribe to my channel because very soon I'll be publishing a video on the places of articulation and also the different manners of articulation that we have in English. And why not visit my channel? You can find many more videos on English pronunciation and phonology, for example, on the glottal stop, on pitch, on the IPA, transcriptions, word stress, and many, many more topics. Make sure to subscribe, leave me a comment. You can also ask me any questions you have on the topic or also make suggestions for future videos.